There are two forces that affect every generation. One is prophecy and the other is policy. And I want you to repeat after me. Say prophecy and policy. Policies are the laws and the edicts and the force of the military economic might of nations and men and women that run those nations. Policy. Prophecy is what God says is going to happen at a given time to a given group of people. Now, the false prophets are going to be replaced by true prophets. And you're going to see young prophets. And you're going to see young men and young women act in the office of the prophet with true prophetic power. Now, what are they going to do? They're going to speak the truth to evil leaders. So here we go. We've established together that there is a prophetic word that has come from the throne of God that says Colorado Springs will be a ground zero for a national revival. I believe it'll be stronger than what happened at Asbury University. Secondly, I believe that it will even eclipse the Jesus movement in its power and its spread. So, what does that do? Many of you went to see the Jesus Revolution movie. Problem is, my wife said, honey, you have to go see it. I said, darling, that's a very emotional request because I lived that movie. I was in that movie. I used to have a, a regular lunch with Lonnie Frisbee. I knew Chuck Smith. Greg uh, Laurie has uh, always been a kind man to me. I watched that. There was another church, Melody Land Christian Center, in front of the main entrance to Disneyland. Had over 15,000 members. And they had an outreach where David Wilkerson preached there every month for 10 years. And I was there every month for 10 years. I would preach there on the third Sunday. David was there on the first. Hal Lindsey was there on the second. That was three Sunday nights in that church every month. And the spread of the gospel was unbelievable. Another thing that Ralph Wilkerson, who was the, no relation to David, but he was a conduit for the charismatic movement nationwide. It was an amazing thing. We saw thousands of Lutherans, Presbyterians, Catholic priests and nuns baptized in the Holy Spirit. We had an amazing run that went on and on and on. I was in it. This one's going to be bigger than that. I'm, I'm going to wait on you. You better shout right now. This one's going to be bigger. This is going to be the city that will have love and unity between the churches. I'm going to say it again. We're going to have love and unity between the churches. God is doing a new work in me. He's doing a new work in me. I'm going to describe it. You'll see why in a moment. Our tent crusades have got to have permanent results. We are not a band-aid. We don't, my wife and I, the last thing on our mind is a photo op. We don't want a picture of crowds. We want the devil to suffer permanent loss, permanent damage, and a sustained move of God to come on the heels of a tent crusade. Now, I'm not saying this. Others are telling me. People are calling me out of the blue. Mario, that ten crusade in July, that's going to be a turning point. There's going to come a turning point. He said last year, we, we had Brother Steve healed in his spine, taking multiple pills every day, healed by the power of God. Bree, who was with us in Bakersfield, uh, at death's door with nothing left, healed by the power of God. And on and on and on it goes. But this time, I'm, I'm warning you, you rem 
Testing, one, two, three, testing. This time, heaven is going to rip the sky open and fall in that tent. And you're going to see people simultaneously throwing crutches in the air and dancing before the power of God. How many of you are ready for that? How many of you are ready for that? There's a reason God doesn't tell us what he's about to do. We couldn't take it. We couldn't take it. And I want you to understand that we need to start praying now. Right now, like we have never prayed before. Our prayers have got to shift from, Lord, won't you please, to warfare prayer, fiery prayer. The Bible says the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That's what James tells us. It doesn't say the prayer of a man avails much. It doesn't say that the prayer of a righteous man avails much. It's all three, folks. The fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. My wife will tell you, furniture is not safe in the room where I'm praying. Because I'm not in there to say, Lord, won't you please maybe, oh, thank you, Lord, for your gentle breeze. I don't want a gentle breeze. I don't want the gentle brush of angels' wing. I want warrior angels that'll come down with swords and get devils out of here that have been here for centuries. Am I preaching yet? It's what we need. I don't want you to pray that way anymore. Secondly, God said to tell you this. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. Isaiah 55, 8. My ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. I'm going to make my next point. Look at me. Your power over depression is the equivalent of what you believe you're on earth to do. You're going to see what that means in a moment. Depression does not attack the purposeful soldier. It attacks the one who's waiting to know what he's about, who doesn't know his identity. I believe that God is up to something so big in my life that he doesn't dare tell me. But I believe that I have got to get to the place where I understand why I'm still here. 